Last year's Razer Blade 14 Ryzen is a small all-round laptop. It has R9 and 3070 in its 14-inch body, and it's well-tuned. It's thin, good-looking and has good performance. Recently, it released a new version. With upgraded specs and MUX switch we've been waiting for, how does this new Blade 14 Ryzen perform? Let's do some tests today. Specs first, R96900HX processor, 8 cores 16 threads. The DGPU upgraded to RTX 3070T. Memory, soldered dual channel 16GB DDR5 4800MHz. Storage, 1TB on CA6, PCIe 4.0x4. A 14-inch IPS screen with 2560 by 1440 resolution and 100% P3 color gamut. Refresh rate is 165Hz. Its design doesn't change much. Still the CNC unibody process and anodic oxide finish. Feels fine and smooth. On the lid is the luminous Razer logo. Hinge damping is well tuned. But the bottom bezel is a bit wide for today. The biggest difference of keyboard area is the speaker on both sides are now seamless to make it look smoother. Power button is still at top right corner, next to delete. Key travel is short, presses are average, but touchpad feels nice, it would be better if it has a shortcut to disable touchpad. It still has two foot pads at the bottom, you can see the backlight through the intake vents. The laptop weighs 1.79 kilograms, and is 16.8 millimeters thick. It's one of the thinnest all-round laptops with DGPU. It's heavier than 14-inch iGPU Ultrabook, but lighter than large-screen all-round laptop. As for I.O., there are two USB as and two USB-C's on both sides, all are 3.2 General 2, USB-C's are full-featured. Besides, it has 3.5mm combo jack and HDMI 2.1. Next comes test. Screen first. The tested color volume was 103.6%, P3 color coverage 97.9%. As for color accuracy, the gamma was around 2.1, closer to display P3. Average E was 1.61, max E 3.39. Looking good, max brightness 373 nits, DC dimming in all brightness. Response time, black to white 10.3 milliseconds, gray to gray 14.9 ms. In general, Blade 14's a good screen with 2K high resolution and 165 Hz high refresh rate. Color gamut confirms to the nominal. Next is its performance. It has an R96900HX processor, 8 cores 16 threads. Zen 3 Plus architecture, TSMC 6 nanometers process. Clock speed. The nominal clock is 4.9 GHz, 0.3 GHz higher than 5900HX. L3 cache is still 16 MB. RAM upgraded to DDR5, supports DDR5-4800 MHz and LPDDR5-6400 MHz. PCIe also upgraded to 4.0. Besides, on this Blade 14, R9-6900HX has 65 Ampere of TDC, and 140 Ampere of EDC. Then let's run some benchmarks to check its performance. Single Core, Cinebench R20 Single Thread scored 602. Boosted by 6% than R95900HX, close to 11 Gen I911900H. Then comes multi-core performance. Run R20 loop test as usual. Scores stabled around 5300 to 5400. It's great in 14-inch all-round laptops, but only 300 higher than last year. But the power was even higher during benchmark. First reached 85 watt, then dropped to 75 watt. For this result, I think there are two reasons. For one, Ryzen 6000 series doesn't change much in architecture. For another, this model's CPU temperature is high. The heat kind of caps CPU clock. CPU was at 4.15 GHz during benchmark, not much better than last year's 3.95 GHz. As for graphics, it has an RTX 3070T, max power 100 watt. The score of 3 DMARC Time Spy was 9936, FSE 12744, Superposition Classroom 6257. It overall boosted by 4% than last year's 100W 3070. If compared to bulky gaming laptops full power GPU, it's about 85.6% of 150W 3070T, and 115% of 140W 3060. New processor comes with new iGPU. 
This gen's iGPU finally has a decent name, Radeon 680M with RDNA 2 architecture. But it has 3070T, and supports MUX switch, so this iGPU may never be used. We'll test it later in Ultrabook review. Let's see the performance in games. It supports MUX switch, which makes up for last gen's drawback. It's cold switching, you can switch to DGPU output only and Razer Synapse and Reboot, or you can set it in BIOS. But maybe because it's an engineering sample, switching sometimes fails. Better to do it in BIOS. First come online games, in default 2K resolution. DOTA2 reach 127 FPS, CSGO 405 FPS, Apex Legends 154 FPS. Then 3A games in default 2K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Forza Horizon 5, over 70 FPS. Metro Exodus, Dying Light 2, about 50. Cyberpunk 2077 and Total War, 46. As I said in previous videos, 150W 3070T is enough for 3A games in 2K and Ultra settings. But for 100W 3070T, Ultra settings will be difficult. Creator test, in Adobe software, PS score was 863, A782, PR652. It's enough for basic content creation. The result is lower than Intel-based bulky gaming laptop, because the strength of Intel is single core performance, and the small size Blade 14 has lower power limit. Besides, Intel's iGPU can accelerate codec in PR, while AMD doesn't support this. In SpecView 2020, Blade 14 scores are higher than 3060 gaming laptop. Let's recap its performance. Blade 14 CPU and GPU have little performance boost which is regular upgrade. For gaming, it supports MUX switch now, so no more low FPS. For 3A games, less demanding games can run smoothly, some heavy games need lower settings to run smoothly. In general, its gaming performance is between full power 3060 and 3070T. In Adobe software, it's enough for basic Photoshop and video editing. Its advantage is portability. Next, let's get inside. It's easy to do it, because you don't need prying tool. Remove all the screws will do. The interior of Blade 14 barely changed. 61.6 watt hours battery at bottom. The battery has two year guarantee, longer than other laptops one year. In PC Mark 10 Modern Office, battery life was 5 hours 51 minutes, nearly 3 hours shorter than last year. Its performance score is 1000 more than last year, which means its battery is performance oriented. Stock SSD is 1TB light on CA6. Small capacity red speed nearly 7000, write speed nearly 5000. In HD tune large capacity sequential read, write test, the write speed dropped after the cache ran short. Mainly because of temperature. Wi-Fi card is on the right, Qualcomm WCN 685X, supporting Wi-Fi 6E. Dual channel memory, DDR5 4800MHz. Soldered, irreplaceable, tested read, write speed was over 50,000, copy speed 48,000, latency 84 nanoseconds. Lastly, cooling, it has dual fans and large area vapor chamber. The whole cooling module takes up half of interior space, next is the thermal performance. Room temperature 25 Celsius, stress FPU, CPU was at 78.9 Celsius, 54 Watt, 3.85 GHz. Why is it lower this year? It turned out that it was stable at 75 Watt at first. Once CPU hit thermal threshold of 96 Celsius, power was then limited at 54 Watt. If room temperature is cooler, then CPU wouldn't reach 96 Celsius, so it could keep running at 75 Watt. This result in terms of power and temperature, is better than last year. But the temperature control is not smart enough. Once it dropped to 54 watt, it couldn't go back. I hope there will be a better dynamic adjusting mechanism. Stress GPU, RTX 3070 was at 72.9 Celsius. Dual stress test, CPU was at 89.5 Celsius. GPU 77.3 Celsius. Exterior temperature, hottest area is in the middle, maxed at 49.4 Celsius. Keyboard middle area was around 46. Left palm rest reached 37. WASD keys are 35. Spacebar 42. Bottom case middle area 44.2. Lastly, noise, it reached 49.7 decibels under full load. In general, Blade 14's performance is well tuned for its size. 
Other laptops of this size usually have entry DGPU, while Blade 14 can handle a 100 watt 3070T. And noise is well controlled, but it is too thin, so the heat insulation is average. Plus engineering samples temperature control still needs optimization. Now you have some understanding of this laptop. As usual, three pros and cons for your reference. Here are pros. First, it's aggressively tuned. In dual stress test, its overall power could reach 135 watt. Better than most 14-inch all-round laptops, even close to 16-inch large screen all-round laptops. Second, weight and size are well handled among same specs. R9 plus 3070T are usually for high-end large screen gaming laptop. But Blade 14 managed to cram them into a 14-inch model, yet still has a thin body. Its size is close to regular Ultrabook, and it's much lighter than 2kg large screen all-round laptop. Third, CNC unibody with fine finish. This is the advantage of Razer all along. Usually, light laptops will use light material like Magnolium, but they feel like plastic. While Razer holds on to CNC process, the touch and design are top tier in 14-inch all-round laptops. After pros, next are cons. First, RAM is soldered 16 gigabytes, can't be upgraded. It's understandable, because it has to consider size, but it has no other option but 16 gigabytes, and you can't upgrade it. For those software that need large RAM, like A, this is not good. Second, short key travel. In order to make the body thin, key travel is the cost. Typing feel is bad, when you need to type a lot it's uncomfortable to use. Third, new edition is overpriced. Last General Blade 14's reference price was $2,512. This year's new one increased to $2,988. Honestly, besides specs upgrade and MUX switch support, it doesn't improve much. Besides engineering samples screen and battery life are not satisfactory. The price with such performance is not attractive as last year. Last year Blade 14 Ryzen Edition did the best it could with its small size. This year Blade 14 uses the same chassis as last year. It's still well-tuned, portable and solid. And it has certain performance boost. But the flaws are inherited as well. Like soldered 16GB RAM, high exterior temperature and so on. So my opinion remains the same. Its key value is high performance and high portability. For those who want performance, mobility and good-looking design, it's good deal. Of course, price should be considered too. Think twice before you buy it. As for specs, the difference between 3080T and 3070T is small. Plus 3060 edition doesn't have 2K screen. The latter is more worthwhile. By the way, Razer is opening Experience Store recently. If you want to buy high-end laptop like Alienware, Razer, or Raj, you'd better go to physical store. After all, image and video can't represent the actual product. Go to the store and feel it is the best way to know a laptop's finish, design, weight and size. Well, that's the end of this video. If you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. This laptop may be worth it or not, but we only have one single purpose, to share information and provide guidance. This is Biba Laptops, I'm Joan. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.